we'll take the sisters' questions. May Allah reward them. They wrote them and sent them. So uh, I'll, I'll take one here, and then I'll pass to Sheikh Ibrahim, and then Sheikh Karim to take others. Uh, there is a question, introduction of speakers and their backgrounds, where they're born, studied. Uh, I think that might take a long time because, mashallah, the shiuch have studied a long time. <laughs> Allahumma barak, and their, their, their travels and seeking knowledge are long. Um, I think you can find most of that information on our you know, channels and websites and stuff. But I think very quickly, Sheikh Ibrahim, Dan, mashallah, Sheikh Hunas from Egypt originally, He's also, mashallah, here in Chicago, doing a lot of the da'wah, and his educational background is extensive, so I'm not going to go into detail, but trust me, he's a sheikh. If you have questions, take it to him. Sheikh Adli gave you a very humble background. I'm sure there's a lot more to it, but we'll leave that as well. Sheikh Karim, also from Egypt. Mashallah, I'm seeing a trend here. <laughs> I'm the only non-Egyptian here. Uh, sheikh Karim, mashallah, Allah mubarak. Yeah. Um, and he is uh, originally from Egypt, obviously, but alhamdulillah, he's here in Denver, uh, Colorado. He has a masjid there, and they're doing amazing work. They have a school, the Safa Academy, and alhamdulillah, on his website, you can see all his credentials and everything, and I am a nobody, so there's no need for that. Um, inshallah. Uh, actually, if you don't mind, there's a question from the sister uh, here. First, I'll say quickly, inshallah, it says, if a person has inherited money from his parents after their demise, money that has some interest mixed in it, would that be halal for him? The person has no idea how much of the money in his inheritance is from interest. Um, there is, I'm just saying that for the sake of people who might hear many different things. There is an opinion from the people of knowledge when it comes to differentiating between the two types of money that is earned from haram, whether it's earned muharram li kasbiha or muharram li dhati. If it's forbidden from the perspective of how it was earned, like it had riba in it, some say that it's permissible for the heirs to inherit that money. But if the money is forbidden for its own self, because it's haram in itself, like wine and haram, things like this, then it's not permissible. But the other opinion, which is the correct opinion, that it's all haram. If the money is haram, and it's inherited and it's haram, then people, the inheritors, should get rid of the haram, and they should estimate to the best of their ability how much is that of interest, and to get rid of it. And when it comes to the sinful act for the one that deceased, it doesn't matter whether they inherited or not, they need to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the deceased that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives. So again, so that people don't misunderstand what I said, it is not permissible for them to use they should get rid of it and do the best they can to estimate how much of that is in interest. The second question, if you go to Umrah, can you go to multiple Umrah? Again, also the answer has two aspects to it. When it comes to the validity of the Umrah, it's valid to make multiple Umrahs. As far as the, this is considered to be Umrah and, and a person goes out to, to the Tan'im or Masjid Aisha and come back with another Umrah, it's a valid Umrah and so on. But then the second part of answering this question, was this the way of the Prophet ﷺ? The answer is no. The Prophet ﷺ, when he went for Umrah, he made one Umrah. And it was something that the Prophet ﷺ didn't go back and forth knowing the virtue of Umrah that he would make multiple Umrahs. And that's why it's best for a person when he goes to make Umrah, make one Umrah and stay in the Haram, make Salah, make Dua and so on. And this is what is best for the person unless there's a valid reason then a person would ask a person of knowledge. Wallahu a'lam. Mentioned with the, the, special, the special situation with Aisha radiallahu anha when she went with Hajj with the Prophet والسلام, because she had her menses so she did not make her Umrah so the Prophet والسلام, after the Hajj he commanded her brother to take her out to the Tan'im and this is where she made the Haram of Umrah and made Umrah. That's why the ulama they say if someone has a special situation then it's okay to make another Umrah but not the norm of the person. Uh, please give uh, tips on how to give nasiha to others about following scholars with uh, right aqidah by avoiding uh, fitna, backbiting, uh, taking scholars' uh, names. Uh, that's it. Right. Yeah. Um, 
you know, giving nasiha may entail uh, naming people, especially if um, the person is, um, you know, outward, um, uh, you know, in the wrong side of things or promoting uh, devious uh, beliefs uh, or bid'ah. Uh, there are some uh, occasions uh, where speaking like that uh, may not be considered backbiting. Uh, one of them is muarif, that you let people know about the person, but provided that you don't have any ill intention inside your heart, and you try to do that in... Uh, you know, a nice way without um, going after the honor of the individual, just focus on the issue. Uh, but sometimes you may have to disclose the name. <laughs> you may have to disclose the name and it's not considered to be backbiting. Um, for, after all, your intention is to uh, promote the haqq around the people. Um, if this is your intention and you're doing it respectfully uh, with focus on the issue, not on the individual, um, that is something that you need to do as a Muslim. Uh, the trait that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, given this ummah, uh, the goodness, the khayriya, kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas, تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ You're the best ummah uh, brought out to mankind because you enjoin what is good and you forbid what is evil and you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and this is our mark, brothers and uh, sisters in Islam. Um, our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, was... Uh, labeled the seal of the messengers. That means there will be no messenger uh, after him. So think about it. If we see something wrong and let go, who is going to correct it? Who's going to correct it? You see, that's your responsibility. You know, مَنْ رَأَى مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ هذا أمر. Whoever sees something wrong, he should he, he must change it, actually, not should. He مَفَلْ يُغَيِّرْهُ You have to change it. Yes, there are some levels, and there are some uh, careful assessment of uh, the benefit and the harm of the utilization of the hand or the tongue, uh, or you may retreat to the heart, uh, but if you do not change that evil, uh, it will get to you. That's the issue. If you see something wrong and you do not change it, it will get to you. Uh, again, the message here that you have to let people know. Uh, but you always have to assess the issue, the subject matter, and the gravity, the magnitude of it. And based on that, you proceed. بإذن الله تعالى. And uh, strive to have the right intention. And if you do that, inshallah, Allah will guide you through it. Bismillah ta'ala. Barakallah feekum. Inshallah, we have the question here from the sisters, and I think we're going to be wrapping up. Brother Fawzi, right? This is the last one? Inshallah. We do have tomorrow QA as well, right? So if you have questions, you can come tomorrow for the QA session as well. Uh, the question is from the sisters, which is, what pathways and programs do you recommend for a female student of knowledge? Regarding seeking of knowledge, one of the misconceptions people have today is that you have to get into like a degree program. If you plan on teaching like in a university or a school, then yes, a degree is useful. If you just want the knowledge, there's many ways. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed people that have ulama that teach in their towns. So that's the best 
If you have a sheikh upon the kitab and sunnah and the way of the Salaf al-Ummah who teaches you bi'adillah with evidences locally and sisters like in San Diego, for example, the durus, there's always sisters that can attend. They're not going to mix with men, but they'll be there in the masjid. They can attend the dars. If you do not have that opportunity and you and your husband or your father or your brother want to go seek knowledge or your son, um, you can do that. You can go to the Muslim land, to the great scholars and seek directly from them. If you do not have that ability, Allah has blessed us with the internet. And the internet is not to watch cat videos and fails on TikTok. That's, that's not what the internet's for, right? Um, Islamically, you can utilize by signing up for uh, courses online. And if you don't want to sign up for courses, alhamdulillah, I mean, I know the shiuch here have videos online where they teach a lot of great knowledge. We have videos on our channel that has fiqh from Zad al from Akhsar al Mukhtasarat, we have Umda, we have Aqida, we have Seerah. All of it's free, you don't have to sign up. So, sisters, brothers, whoever wants to seek knowledge and is unable to go and travel to the people of knowledge, you can still get the knowledge. And again, if you have the Arabic language, especially the great ulama of our ummah like Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen and Sheikh Ibn Baz and Sheikh Albani and Sheikh Saleh Al Fawzan and others, their videos are online. Now, they've been their whole series, like Sharh Al Mumti and Explanation of Bulugh, are online. You can go through them if you want the knowledge. If you're after a degree, that's a different thing. And there are online programs for that as well. And inshallah, with the AIM program, we're going to be moving uh, into opening up an Islamic university based on the Quran and Sunnah and uh, make it a, a program that brothers and sisters from all over the world can benefit from as well, inshallah. The only thing I will say, don't give up. If you want to seek knowledge for the pleasure of Allah and the ma'rafatullah, the, the getting to know your Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala and your responsibility as abd of Allah, no matter what, if you're a brother, if you're a sister, if you're a child, if you're old, if you're young, don't give up. Strive, struggle, ask Allah to open the ways for you, Allah will open a way. Jazakumullah uh, khairan. We're going to wrap it up now. Inshallah. And what? Inshallah. So, the, it's not that I'm getting old, it's just a font, it's really small, yeah, it's, a, it's a phone, yeah. Um, so tomorrow, inshallah, at 11 a.m., there'll be a youth boot camp. I think at Fajr, we have also a program at IANT uh, after Fajr. So 11 a.m., we'll pick back up here with the youth group, a uh, youth boot camp uh, by me. Uh, the sisters will have their own boot camp. Uh, then at 12, our brother uh, Nabil Nisar, inshallah, will be uh, benefiting us with the effects and importance of wala al bara upon da'wah. And then apparently I'm speaking again after that. And then Sheikh Karim will benefit us. And we'll have the panel discussion QA, which will be again your opportunity to benefit from asking questions here, inshallah ta'ala. And tomorrow, since it's the last day, we really, like the Sheikh said, we want to encourage all of you to come and bring people with you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the ilm al-nafi', for the beneficial knowledge. Jazakumullahu khairan.